The Yakuza, also known as Borekuran or Gokuro, are a Japanese gang with origins dating back to the 17th century. The name Yakuza can be literally translated to 893, which is a losing hand in the Japanese form of blackjack. As this gang developed from the likes of gamblers and martial artists who were not quite samurais, the name seemed rather fitting. The Sumi Yoshikai are the second largest criminal organization in Japan, with a population of roughly 20,000 members, which are then divided into 277 clans. A major threat to society is posed both locally and internationally through racketeering, gambling, sex trade violence, fraud, weapon and drug trafficking, and countless other crimes. It is interesting that the mere level of interference from law enforcement is minimal, and typically results in mere spectating. The Yakuza are a group who are known to hide in plain sight, and are often successful business owners who are integrated members of the community. A term often used to describe this type of action is known as wise guy, which is commonly seen in the Italian Mafia, Russian Vizagone, and Japanese Yakuza. It basically states that these people are content with mainstream society and see themselves and other mafioso as superior to everyone else. The Japanese Yakuza have origins dating back to the 17th century, but the Sumi Yoshikai were only founded in 1958 by Matsuro Iko. There have been numerous name changes along the way, but the group was originally known as Mineto Kai. The former president referred to as Sosei in traditional Japanese culture was Shijio Nishiguchi. He was the supreme leader on the second largest group of the Yakuza until he passed away from the old age on September 12, 2017. When he passed away, another interim member was immediately assassinated, so at the current moment there actually is no leader for the Sumi Yoshikai. Although he was a Sosai, there is a rather looser chain of command than you may see in other gangs, which allow multiple people leadership and control. There are numerous reports which state that the size of the group fluctuates, yet it is clear to see that the number can range anywhere from 12 to 20,000 members. I believe that the reason for this discrepancy is due to the numerous subgroups and lack of total authoritarianism, which may allow for an easier leave from, from such a tight-knit group. Their jurisdiction is within Tokyo, staying more along the western borders, but they also conduct business in 17 other administrative districts of Japan. Their main criminal activities involve racketeering, providing protection for small businesses, fraud, and other white-collar crimes. That being said, the Sumi Yoshikai will not hesitate from committing violent acts when necessary. The term Sokoya has been used to name the specific type of extortion, which involves gang members using tactics such as blackmail and fear-mongering to not only gain profit, but also more importantly power. With estimates of a combined size ranging from 80 to 100,000 members worldwide, the Yakuza are always recruiting and expanding, but only if certain criteria are met. No Caucasian or black peoples have ever been allowed in the group. If a person is unable to speak Japanese, then they would not be of use. Typically, a person's lineage will be that of a second or third Japanese family, but it is noted that about 20 to 30 percent of the actual Yakuza population is made up by members of Korea, Thailand, and other Asian countries that are not directly related to the Japanese. The Sumi Yoshikai have adapted all these same values, plus additional criteria involving financials, loyalty, and the ability to communicate and interact in a professional manner. These attributes are all vital to the group structure as it shows that a hierarchical regime has been put in place, which depicts an almost legitimate code of conduct. The Sumi Yoshikai do not have the largest influence on Canadian soil, but through global economics, it has been reported that stock market corruption may be a direct result of this organization. It is also reported that the Yakuza have invested heavily in Canadian and U.S. real estate, ranging from golf courses to hotels. What gives this subculture its competitive advantage over other organized crime syndicates is their business knowledge, savviness, and ability to evade the law. 74-year-old Shijaru Shire was able to evade arrest for over 14 years on multiple murder charges while simply conducting his business from Bangkok, Thailand. Members of the group would visit him multiple times a year, always bringing cash gifts to where he remained low-key with his wife, 
while occasionally playing chess in the courtyard, which was eventually how he got caught. Building a loyal base from a young age allowed the Yakuza to have members who are not only life committed, but also who understand how to maintain a proper life by learning from their elders and by members who came before them. There are approximately 3,200 organized crime groups in Japan. Of these, about 1,400 are affiliated with one of the three main Yakuza groups, the Nagawa Kai, the Sumiyoshi Kai, and the Yamaguchi Gumi. Unlike the other two, which run their organizations in very pyramid-like fashions, the Sumiyoshi Kai is rather a federation of gangs, which allow each other to operate within one another. Although it falls under a more loose description than the Inagawa Kai and the Yamaguchi Gumi, the subculture would still be classified using the bureaucratic hierarchical model. These sub-gangs answer to an Oyaban, or family boss, who gives commands to a first and second lieutenant, as well as an administration. The administration then gives orders to the Shingen and the Kagai. Both the first and second lieutenant are able to give orders to the Kayodai, who then directs the Shitai. It is very much a familial type of organization, but the discipline that exists within the community deem it necessary to view this group as hierarchical. It is speculated that when a new leader is appointed to the Sumiyoshi Kai, that higher order and even harsher ruling will fall into place. But only time will tell. The theory that I believe best suits the Sumiyoshi Kai is the protection theory. The main reason that the racketeering and extortion of businesses alike have been justified are due to the humanitarianism shown by subgroups during time of crisis. Immediately after the Kobe earthquake, disaster relief services, including the use of a helicopter, were deployed by the Yakuza in contrast to the much slower response time by the Japanese government. This act was later repeated in 2011 after the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami with groups also opening their business doors to refugees and sending dozens of supply trucks to affected areas. Acts like this are what not only justify the semi-legitimateness in their own minds, but proves the worth of these groups to the public. The Italian Mafia were the first to use the protection theory for profit, but it would appear that the Accusa have truly exemplified the meaning. The racketeering, extortion, limited violence, and ability to provide services that the government cannot would appear that the production theory is the best way to describe the Yakuza, especially when you look at their prior success. The Yakuza's biggest enemy to date appears to be themselves. The police have such little involvement in the Yakuza that until an innocent life is put in jeopardy, the involvement will remain at near minimum regardless of how many Yakuza members are killed by rival gang members. The largest gang wars were involving the Yakuza have stemmed from the ostracism of unfit members who eventually start their own gang and exact revenge. The Yakuza is known for violent rivalries between different gangs, and these rivalries would sometimes spiral out of control into full-on gang wars. The worst Yakuza gang war ever was a Yamaichi war that took place in Japan from 1985 to 1989. It stemmed from a succession dispute in the Yamaguchi Gumi, which is Japan's largest and most dominant Yakuza clan. A splinter group named Ichiwa Kai was formed by a disgruntled lieutenant who failed to inherit the Yamaguchi Gumi's top position. He then ordered the assassination of his former gang's leading figures, which was carried out through a shooting inside an elevator. The Yamaguchi Gumi vowed revenge, igniting a bloody four-year war. Things got so terrible that a daily local newspaper started putting together a squad card, listing down the deaths and injuries inflicted upon the two gangs on their front page. In the end, the Yamaguchi Gumi won a costly victory, since too many of their members ended up in police custody. Another more recent Yakuza war was the Dojin Saido War between 2006 and 2013. This was caused when a group of about 500 men broke off from the Dojin Kai group, forming a new gang called the Saido Kai. The splinter group would then form an alliance with the Yamaguchi Gumi, the main rival of their previous group. This new affiliation led to a bloody seven-year war, which involved the use of military machine guns, hand grenades, bombs, and shots exchanged during high-speed car chases. Both sides suffered heavy casualties, and one innocent civilian died from gunfire. The war officially ended in 2013, with both sides issuing a public apology and the Saido Kai dissolving itself. As far as financial competitors are concerned, the Sumiyoshi Kai run a number of front businesses, the behind-the-scenes illegal operations, 
but are also involved with legitimate real estate as a primary means of operation and survival. The group has become successful in its methods due to the cooperation of law enforcement, the legitimized activities that exist as a forefront to what may occur behind the scenes, and the humanitarian efforts during times of crisis. The biggest outside rivals would have to be the Chinese triads, but the coalition between the law enforcement and the Yakuza can do a very good job of keeping their presence to a mere minimum. Links between this organization and many stores which pay protection fee with other realty companies and potential buyers and within the stock markets through influence and purchase. As stated previously, the Sumiyoshi Kai are directly related with other gangs, such as the Yamaguchi Gumi and Inagawa Kai. They all have separate territory with separate operations, so as not to directly impede on one another's business. Other operations of these gangs include trafficking of narcotics and weaponry, deep ties within the sex trade industry, and a, mere, and a major presence in the entertainment industry. The Yamaguchi Gumi appear to be the most corrupt and delinquent, but ties between the gangs will have members interfering in their non-primary affairs. Law enforcement views the Yakuza to be as much of a solution as they are a problem. Although the anti-Yakuza laws were established in 2012, it does not appear to have changed the relationship and existence of the gang. If anything, it has forced them to become smarter than they were, and adapting even further to an ever-changing society. It is very clear that there are problems in the policing of these gangs, but it does not seem that things would get any better if an eradication were to occur. Corruption has existed in Japan for millennia. The Yakuza were simply smart enough to take advantage of the situation and make profit. The Sumiyoshi Kai do not provide more protection. The Sumiyoshi Kai do provide more protection and assistance than trouble caused, mm -hmm. and for that reason, I'm not sure if police will ever truly rid the country of their presence. In conclusion, the Sumiyoshi Kai and Yakuza in general are valued members of society in Japan and provide a benefit to those around. As long as civilians are not being harmed, things will not change.